organic chemistry is essentially the study of carbon compounds a very important category of the organic compounds are the hydrocarbons from the name itself we see that these are the compounds of hydrogen and carbon so this is a very important category of organic compounds these are the compounds containing hydrogen and carbon hydrocarbons are classified as saturated hydrocarbons that is these are the compounds containing all single bonds and the unsaturated hydrocarbons the compounds which have a presence of a double or a triple bond so hydrocarbons are classified as saturated that is the compounds that contain only single bonds and unsaturated compounds which have a presence of either a double bond or a triple bond in an organic compound the name of the compound is derived by the number of carbon atoms it has so the presence of one carbon atom shows that it is a meth compound how we get the exact name we'll see later but one carbon compound means meth two means eth three means prop four is but and from five onwards it becomes easy as you must have seen in maths from polygons etc the presence of five carbon atoms means pent six is hex seven is hept eight is oct nine is non and 10 is dec so this is the number of carbon atoms present in the organic compound and this is how it shows the name of the compound let's start with the saturated hydrocarbons we know saturated hydrocarbons are those which have only single bonds let's start with alkenes these are the hydrocarbons that contain all single bonds now let's take n is equal to 1 that is when only one carbon atom is present so there is only one carbon atom now to satisfy the octet rule it forms four covalent bonds and since we are talking of hydrocarbons it's linked to hydrogen so this is an alkene that is a saturated hydrocarbon linked to the hydrogen atoms by a single bond and this is the compound formed when n is equal to 1 that is this is an alkene containing one carbon atom now let's see what happens when there are two carbon atoms we are still talking of alkenes that means the two carbon atoms are linked to each other by a single covalent bond since each carbon atom has to satisfy the octet rule so it forms four covalent bonds that is 1 2 3 and 4 this also forms four covalent bonds the three with hydrogen since we are talking of hydrocarbons and one with carbon similarly these three spaces are occupied by hydrogen now let's take n is equal to 3 that is there are three carbon atoms linked to each other by single covalent bonds the other spaces are occupied by hydrogen atoms these are the three alkenes that we get so when n is equal to 1 we have only one carbon atom linked to four hydrogen atoms so we get the formula ch4 that is one carbon four hydrogen atoms similarly when n is equal to 2 two carbon atoms are linked to each other by a single covalent bond and the remaining spaces are occupied by six hydrogen atoms so when n is equal to 2 the formula is c2h6 similarly for n is equal to 3 we get c3h8 now do you observe any trend in this let's observe when n is equal to 1 we have one carbon atom when n is equal to 2 we get two carbon atoms similarly for n is equal to 3 we get three carbon atoms in the first case when carbon is 1 hydrogen is 4 that is if we double 1 we get 1 into 2 so 2 plus 2 we get 4 
in the second case double 2 so we get 2 into 2 4 plus 2 we get 6 similarly if we double 3 we get 3 2s are 6 plus 2 8 and so it goes on so the general formula of the alkanes is c n h 2 n plus 2 where n shows the number of carbon atoms so when n is equal to 1 if we substitute in the formula we get c1 h1 into 2 plus 2 that is ch4 for n is equal to 2 we get c2h6 and so on so when n is equal to 6 if we substitute it in the formula we get cn that is c6 h2 n plus 2 that is 2 into 6 plus 2 which becomes 12 plus 2 14 so for n is equal to 6 we get c6 h14 so the general formula of the alkenes is cn h2 n plus 2 now we know that the number of carbon atoms gives the name to the organic compounds so when number of carbon atom is 1 in this case it's 1 so one carbon atom means it's a meth compound and since it is an alkane we give the suffix ane so one carbon atom means meth and since it is an alkane it becomes methane similarly two carbon atoms it is eth and since it is an alkane it becomes ethane similarly the names of the alkenes are derived in this manner say we take C5H12 there are five carbon atoms so we see five means pent so we get pent and the suffix is ane since it is an alkane so the name becomes pentane now what is the name of an alkane which contains eight carbon atoms from the table we know 8 means oct so the name of the alkane is written as the number of carbon atoms so 8 carbon atoms means it is oct and since it is an alkane it gets the suffix in so an alkane containing 8 carbon atoms is named octane what is the formula of butane Butane is a compound that is it is an alkane containing four carbon atoms. The general formula of all alkanes is CnH2n plus 2. So from the name butane we know it contains four carbon atoms and it is an alkane. So we use the general formula of alkane. We substitute n is equal to 4. So we get c 4 h 4 into 2 plus 2 that is we get C4 H4 to the 8 9 10 so the general formula of butane is C4 H10 we talked of saturated hydrocarbons that is the hydrocarbons containing all single bonds now the unsaturated hydrocarbons are those which have a presence of either a double bond or a triple bond so when there is one double bond those hydrocarbons are known as alkenes and when there is a triple bond those hydrocarbons are known as alkynes let's take alkenes so alkenes are the hydrocarbons which contain one double bond so in this case there is one double bond being formed and to satisfy the octate it has to form two other covalent bonds since we are talking of hydrocarbons all these spaces are to be occupied by hydrogen atoms so hydrogen occupies this space and this space can it occupy this space no it cannot because we know that hydrogen can can form only a single bond hydrogen cannot form a double bond so in this case when n is equal to 1 it does not form a valid alkene so for n is equal to 1 we have no alkene let's take n is equal to 2 so there are two carbon atoms since n is equal to 2 and the two are linked to each other by a double bond since we are talking of alkenes now let's satisfy the other places each carbon can now form only two more covalent bonds 1 2 3 and 4 
and these places are taken up by hydrogen atoms. So we get H. So this is an alkene containing two carbon atoms. Let's take alkene containing three carbon atoms. Since now we have three carbon atoms and there is a presence of one double bond. So the first carbon is linked to the other carbon atom by one double bond. And the other one is linked by a single covalent bond itself. Let's try to occupy the other spaces by hydrogen atoms. So this forms one, two, three, four. This, this carbon atom is already forming three covalent bonds. So only one covalent bond can now be formed. And this can form three more covalent bonds. And these positions are taken up by hydrogen atoms. So now these are the three alkenes that we get for n is equal to 1. We know we are not getting any alkene because hydrogen cannot form a double bond. So n is equal to 1 does not give us any alkene. For n is equal to 2 we get C2H4. For n is equal to 3 we get C3H6. Do you observe any trend in this case? Yes you do. You see when n is equal to 2 there are two carbon atoms and, is, and there is double the number of hydrogen atoms. Similarly, for n is equal to 3, there are three carbon atoms and double the number of hydrogen atoms. So the general formula of the alkenes is CnH2n. That is, if the number of carbon atoms is n, the number of hydrogen atoms is twice the number of carbon atoms. So we know n is equal to 1 does not give us an alkene. So for any other alkene, say when n is equal to 4, if we substitute it in the formula, we get C4H2 into 4, that is 8. So when n is equal to 4, the alkene is C4H8. Now let's try to name the alkenes. Again, we know the number of carbon atoms gives the names. So let's start with the valid alkene, that is C2H4. So two carbon atoms means it is eth and since it is an alkene, it gets the suffix ene. So it becomes ethene. Similarly, say we have C5H10, so five carbon atoms means it is pent and since it is an alkene, it gets the suffix ene. So it becomes pentene. So this is how the alkenes get their names. What is the formula of an alkene with nine carbon atoms? So we know the general formula of the alkenes is CnH2n. So when there are 9 carbon atoms, if we substitute this n with 9, we get C9H18. So the formula of an alkene containing 9 carbon atoms is C9H18. What is the formula of hexene? So as you can see, Hex shows the presence of six carbon atoms. So now we know the general formula of alkenes is CnH2n. We're talking of hexene. That means there are six carbon atoms in the alkene. So we substitute this N with six. We get six into two, twelve. So the formula of hexene becomes C6H12. We have talked of alkenes, that is the hydrocarbons linked to each other by single covalent bonds. Alkenes contain a double bond. Now let's talk of alkynes. These are also unsaturated hydrocarbons containing a triple bond. So for n is equal to 1, there is one triple bond and one single bond. So this space can be occupied by hydrogen. But can hydrogen form a triple bond? No, hydrogen forms only a single covalent bond. So hydrogen cannot take this place and so N is equal to 1 is not a valid alkyne. Let's take N is equal to 2. The two carbon atoms are linked to each other by a triple bond. One space is only left which is occupied by hydrogen atoms. Let's take N is equal to 3. So there are three carbon atoms. There is a presence of one triple bond. The remaining spaces are occupied by the hydrogen atoms. 
Keep in mind, each carbon atom forms four covalent bonds. So now, if we look at the alkynes, what do we see? We see N is equal to 1 is not a valid alkyne because hydrogen cannot form three covalent bonds. N is equal to 2, we get C2H2. And for N is equal to 3, we get C3H4. Any trend in this case? Let's see. N is equal to 2, we get C2. If we double this number, we get 4. Minus 2, we get 2. Similarly, for C3H4, we have 3 carbon atoms. If we double 3, we get 6. And 6 minus 2, we get 4. So the general formula of the alkynes is CnH2n minus 2. We know N is equal to 1 is not a valid alkyne because carbon cannot be linked to hydrogen by forming three covalent bonds. The remaining alkynes follow the general rule that is the formula CnH2n minus 2. So let's take N is equal to 3 in this case. So when we have N is equal to 3, we substitute it in the formula. We get C3 H 2n that is 3 to the 6 minus 2. So we get 6 minus 2 that is 4. So we get C3 H 4. Let's name the alkynes now. As we had done for alkenes and alkenes, say we take C4 H 6, the presence of 4 carbon atoms means it is but and since it is an alkyne, it gets the suffix ine. So it becomes butyne. Similarly, for all the other alkynes. Now, the formula of heptine. What is the formula of heptine? We know hept means there are seven carbon atoms. The general formula of the alkynes is CnH2n minus 2. Since we are talking of heptine, we substitute N as 7, so we get C7, H7 into 2 minus 2, so we get C7, H12. So this is the formula of heptine. What is the name of an alkyne containing 8 carbon atoms? Now, we know when there are 8 carbon atoms, we have the name of and in this case, we are talking of an alkyne. So the name becomes of and the suffix becomes ine. So this is the name of an alkyne containing eight carbon atoms. That is octyne. So now let's revise the hydrocarbons. We've seen hydrocarbons are the compounds of hydrogen and carbon. They can be open chain or aliphatic or they can be cyclic or closed chain compounds. Now, when we talk of open chain or aliphatic hydrocarbons, we see that they can be saturated or unsaturated. Saturated, we have alkenes, that is the compounds of carbon linked to each other by only single covalent bonds. And the unsaturated hydrocarbons show the presence of a double or a triple bond. They can be alkenes, that is which contain a double bond, or alkynes, that is those compounds which contain a triple bond.